welcome. Um, my name's Sean. I'll go into a little bit more of who I am and what I do in a little bit. But whilst we get started, I what am I going to do? I'm I have a little theory to present. So I want to, to to see. It's not a scientific theory. It's more of an observation. So I have here we go. I've noticed that in the online polyglot communities, there tends to be people tend to fall into two sides, two camps, and they tend to be what I would call the wannabes. And I was well and truly in this in this camp for a long time. So I don't mean this in a disparaging way. These are people who stand around, look, look from the sidelines. They have this idea that it looks kind of interesting. I'll, I want to know about learning languages, but they're not quite, they're not, they're not ready yet, or they're not doing it yet. And then you have these aspiring polyglots. This is where I would say I am now. People who are actively studying languages and they're trying to get better at it. Now, over here, I've seen lots of people debating this and arguing like what, what means what I'm not going to, I'm not going to state an opinion on which one and what, what makes the difference between a polyglot or a hyper polyglot. But today in this, in this presentation, I, I really want to share my journey, my experiences of the past year. And I hope that it's really aimed at people in these first two categories. Um, I hope people who are much further along this journey, then I am also get some benefit from it, but that's that's what this is about. So, so when I say wannabe, what do I mean? Well, let me tell you a little bit. This is what I mean for me. This is what it meant for me. I have a little timeline that I've made here. I can pinpoint exactly exactly when I decided I was going to. I wanted to become a poly. I, I didn't know the words polyglot, but I wanted to start down this journey of learning languages. That was ten years ago. So 10 years ago, I started to learn Dutch after I went, I went to Amsterdam. I had a, a fantastic time as most, most people in their twenties do when they go to Amsterdam, but I really fell in, fell in love with the, the architecture, with the, with the culture, with the, with the language. I, I looked at the language and thought, I want, I want to know more about this culture. And I bought a, I decided I'm going to do this. Um, and until that point I was, you know, a monolingual English speaker and wasn't that interested, didn't know how to learn other languages. But as you can see here, I did go on to eventually learn Italian, but it took a long time and I kept trying to learn other languages in the meantime. And it was just a struggle. It was a big struggle. But there's this, uh, there was a chance encounter a few years ago. And that helped a lot. That helped transform me to where I am today. And I credit that with discovering the work, the, the online content of, of this man here, Professor Alexander Arguez. Now, chances are, if you're in, if you're in this chat, or I've just seen in the chat, we've got Ian in, uh, Ian's in here. There are people in the, the, in this, in the professor's academy who, will, and many of you will know who he is. Um, if you don't know, let's just say he's definitely on. We could maybe make a separate category for him. He's well and truly on this end of the end of the scale. But before we, I won't go into much more information there. Uh, throughout this presentation, I'll be sharing a lot more information about what the academy is, how it works. Uh, I'm not affiliated I'm with the academy. I'm just a student there who's got a lot out of it, and I want to share what I've learned. So that's enough about that. Um, who am I then? Who am I? Who am I, this person who's talking to you, who, believe it or not, I do actually own more than one shirt and jacket. I just particularly like this combination. And um, so I don't like to say I am plus occupation. We do that a lot in Anglo, well, I think many cultures, but Anglo, Anglo, uh, Anglo-Saxon cultures. But I'm a curious person. If I, had, if I had to choose an adjective, I really like to know why. And I've always been this way. And my method was always, or my medium for learning about the world was history. I studied history at university, but also culture, literature, and now increasingly languages. So I have to remember to look at my notes because I get carried away. Um, 
but I also have a, te uh, a teaching background. I taught English for 10 years. That's how I was able to move to Italy. Um, so like, like many English speakers who become teachers, my main motivation really at the time was I wanted to travel, but I also wanted to learn languages. That was a key point. Um, when I decided I was going to learn Dutch, I began um, going out looking for information. And I, I read, um, who was it? Benny Lewis, who has a talk here on, on Saturday. I discovered his material. I spent hours and hours reading his blog. And, you know, I, I had this plan. I'm going to go, I'm going to travel, I'm going to teach English, and I'm going to learn all these languages. And um, that's what I did. Well, I failed at that for a long time, but now I am successfully, I would say successfully studying simultaneously Italian, French, Latin, and Greek. And Latin and Greek weren't even on my original list. So here's the question then, why did I fail for so long? What happened? And, um, as you can see, the animations don't work on this, but it's fine. I didn't have a clear why. That's what I now realize. Um, perhaps for some of you, you've had this experience as well. Perhaps I suspect many of you not. Many of you probably have been into this for a long time and have had no difficulties. But I I think the people, the, the wannabes, the aspiring polyglots, we tend to stay back a little bit. We're a bit quieter. So that's why part of the reason why I wanted to do this today. So this why, it just wasn't there. It wasn't there. I Basically, I would summarize it as this. I thought it would be cool. That was it. I thought it would be cool. I wanted to learn lots of languages to be able to do this, to be able to speak to people from different parts of the world. But, you know, and that's a valid reason. I'm sure many of you feel the same way, but it's not, it wasn't enough for me. It wasn't enough to help me get past some of the barriers, some of the problems I had originally. So what changed then? What changed? And I can't remember if the slideshow is the next one or not. What changed? Yes. So I wrote on that original timeline that I showed at the beginning, there was a chance encounter. And this uh, shows the power of the internet, really. Um, three years ago, I was running... I still run my online English community. We study together, we learn, we we read literature together, and I was researching how to help them learn better, basically. You know, um, I took my job seriously and I was researching and I stumbled across this video. It wasn't even the professor's video, it was about um learning learning Japanese through manga which I, I've never had never had any interest in that. It just stumbled up. I stumbled upon it. They mentioned the professor, shared his video from many years ago now, where he's sharing his daily polyglot routine. And that was it. Um, I shared it with my students. We talked about it. It was very motivating. And I went down the rabbit hole. So I went to his old, I went to his old web, uh, website and was reading all about this idea of studying great books. And behind me there's a big collection of black books there's two shelves those are all the great books of the west i'll come back to that a little bit in a little bit and this idea that you can you can learn languages or you, this concept of learning languages for the purpose of getting to the literature of that culture was something i hadn't considered and that sounds really strange for someone who loves history loves literature teaches literature I think it was a mindset limitation. I think um, I, th I think in my mind, I never thought I'd be able to do that. And it just really spoke to me, this idea. The professor also laid out this idea of an, an ideal course in polyliteracy, how he would organize an undergraduate um, and, and I think a postgraduate degree course with the goal of learning multiple languages to eventually discuss the, li the literature of those languages. And, and I remember thinking, why didn't I have this? Well, there was no option for this when I was, I probably would not have chose it when I was 18 or 19, but I should have. Um, so, and there was another blog post as well, um, which he has since, I believe, made 
several videos about. And this this idea of why an educated person should strive to learn around six languages. Now, it doesn't mean that if you don't do this, you're not educated. But the arg his argument is, or his case, is that it's a just a worthwhile endeavor. And again, that for me, that as an, an intellectual challenge to pursue, just just sounded fantastic. Um, so if you're not familiar with this, this his his idea, just to summarize, so for someone like myself, so someone born in, you know, into Western civilization, you know, you would learn English if you don't speak English, obviously, because English is the world language. You'd also learn, he recommends you learn other large European languages, such as French and German, and the classical or ancient languages of your civilization, so Latin and Greek. And then something else that's interesting to you within that sphere, but also ideally something exotic. The word exotic is relative. Again, to someone in Western civilization, that would be something like Chinese, Arabic. But this is all this is all relative. It's not saying everyone should do this. It depends where you're starting from. But anyway, as it says there, I had decided I wasn't ever going to get good at learning languages. I kind of pushed it aside. I had said it's, an, it's enough. I, I'm living in Italy. I can communicate with people well enough. That's enough. But this really inspired me and I thought no I can do this so I returned to Italian seriously and uh, you know more importantly I, I just believed I could do it um but if any of you were paying close attention to my my beautiful piece of PowerPoint artwork or Google Slides artwork the chance encounter was in 2020 but I still don't think I was there I was still failing for a long time so why was that? Um, before I say, the, uh, there's several points, and now I'm going to go into those things I overcame, I believe I overcame to, to get to this point. But there was also something um, I started doing, and uh, that was I started, I decided, after failing, I kind of failed again with Italian. I, it wasn't going very well. A year of it, it still wasn't working. I decided I was going to follow. I have some, I have some show and tell here. I decided I was going to follow the professor's method for learning a language in fifteen minutes a day using the Azimil books. So I have a very, very battered old French without toil book here. Um, I have to be very careful with this now because it's falling to pieces. Um, I started using this, following this method last year, and. It was fantastic. It worked really well. Um, so for the so as I, I sort of mentioned this, I don't know if I said this at the start. It's in my notes. I'm going to focus for the rest of this presentation more on the kind of mindset changes and also the philosophical you know, lessons I learned. But at the end, if anyone wants to ask practical questions about like, what I mean by this 15 minutes a day, how to, how the professor recommends you study an Azimil book. Please ask those questions at the end and I'll be happy to answer what I can. So I started, but I was still struggling a little bit. I still couldn't quite get the rhythm going. And it's discipline. It all comes down to discipline. So how did I become more disciplined? This is going to sound really bad for someone who says they're an English teacher who loves history. Uh, and that was I had to learn how to read again. What do I mean by that? So. Last May, the professor launches his online academy. And first, uh, I couldn't join any of the classes because there wasn't a, a, an Italian class. I wouldn't have been good enough then anyway to join an Italian literature class. But um, there was a Great Books of the West class. And the idea of the Great Books of the West um, is you're supposed to read all of these books together with, with others and discuss them. There's a huge range of books there, but we, we were going to, we started with this book. This is Herodotus. And for those of you, oh, I'm, I'm full screen, sorry. <laughs> for those of you that don't know, Herodotus is um, regarded as the, the father of history. He's the first historian in Western culture, um, Western civilization, at least that we that we know of, that we have his, his words. And I just struggled. 
I struggled. Um, there's no excuse, is there? Like, how do you, you know, I just struggled a lot with this. There was just, I saw myself as a reader and it was really hard. It was really hard to read this uh, style of English and then come to a group of other people and actually offer meaningful, you know, meaningful inputs, being able to discuss it. So the course, the Great Books course is heavily based on, more show and tell, heavily based on this book here, How to Read a Book, which doesn't sound like a very inviting title. I know that, but it's fantastic. Um, again, I can go into the kind of the outline of that book and the ideas of it at the end, if anyone wants to know. But um, I went back to basics. I went back to basics and I began spending a lot of time. Um, I dedicated a lot of my time to reading and improving my English, which sounds weird to say, but uh, it really, you can do it. There are different stages of reading. And this book argues we're not we're not taught all the stages in our education system. Um, and the final point on my on my uh, very basic presentation here, I set myself a daily target. So I came to realize that, you know, well, first of all, I bought this book. I bought this one and decided I'm going to commit to this. And OK, I bought the rest. <laughs> there's a lot. There's all of those books. There's 52, I think, in the collection. There are. And um, they are dense, you know, they are dense. There's a lot of words on the page and I just did the maths. It's going to take me a long time to read all of these books, especially, you know, that if I want to also learn the languages that they're written in, you know, um, Dante and Machiavelli are in there. If I want to get my Italian up to a good enough level to be able to read those. That's going to take time. What about French, Latin, Greek? These books, these like German, these languages, I haven't even started yet. So I did the calculations. I decided, okay, I need to dedicate at least three hours a day minimum to reading and writing and, and studying languages. I need to become that type of person. And um, yeah, it was amazing. It was uh, everything just started to fall fall into place with that i just became more focused on what i was doing which i think this goes back to my original point about needing to really understand your why and then once you think you know dive into it so that's how i started last year to get really disciplined um i would next say that i went up to the next level of this stepped up my game a bit when i joined the language learning support group this is one of the classes in in the academy now, obviously, we meet every week and we talk about how we're doing, how our language learning journeys are going. Um, so there's accountability there. That's an obvious benefit. But I think the more important benefits here were learning from each other um, and being inspired by each other. I very quickly was encouraged to start Italian again, seriously. At this point, I was only doing French and reading the great books and I thought I should focus on one language at a time. And it sounds obvious. I know many of you know this, that Italian, if I'm already at this level in the Italian, my French is here, it's going to help. I should keep going. Um, and I found myself being able to do it for the first time in my life. I was actually juggling more than one language confidently every day. No problems. I was enjoying it. And that's when I was also encouraged to start flirting with other languages and that's how I ended up studying Greek, because as a result of this, this great books course, I had fallen in love with and wanted to know more. Falling in love is not the best word, actually, but uh, became very interested in Greek history. It's a very brutal, very interesting period um, for me. So that's where how that helps a lot. And just just the lessons we learned from each other was fantastic. Were fantastic. Um, the next thing that happened that really helped was joining the path of the polyglot. So that's where the title of this presentation comes from. The The professor ha has written, he has, he has a manuscript called the path of the polyglot. And what we do in this class is, um, well, it's a seminar class. We meet and he he lectures to us on a section of the book that he's been, that he's, uh, that he's been working on that week. And then 
he will ask us for feedback and we're helping him through this process and through the process of explaining it to us to improve the manuscript and that's the that's what's that's the, the plan there um i could go on and on about points there um but i'm gonna limit myself um so that as i've written here i've got it deepened my philosophical motivations so i've already mentioned that i found my why you know why am i why study languages for me that became you know i want to get i want to get at the literature of other civilizations i want to also go deeper into the literature of english you know, english speaking the english speaking world there are lots of books i wanted to read there but the course really helped me to deepen this even further um there are multiple options here but the, the main one i want to share is this idea of developing a new self i don't know I'm sure many of you who speak many languages, you probably feel or know or have experienced this concept of having a different personality or feeling, you know, you know, in a, like that you have a different personality in different languages. Now, I would take that a little bit further. So the professor gave us this argument that in many ways, just breathe for a second here. He says learning another language is a little bit of a redundant activity. It's not necessary. You already know a language. Your your mother your your mother your mother tongue. Do you need to learn another language? It's a legitimate argument that you could make. But obviously, we're polyglots here, so let's look at the other side or aspiring polyglots. So he argues that actually, by learning another language, we intentionally, as an adult, by choosing this, we are creating another self. And this was a very, for, for me, this was just a very profound thought. thought. Um, this idea that it's 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 an ongoing intellectual exercise. I do. I enjoy physical exercise. I enjoy being out in nature. I do lots of hiking and lots of cycling. And this is, in many ways, the equivalent of that. But um, in many ways, it's also greater because eventually I will become too old, probably, hopefully not too soon, too old to go out, you know, hiking for long, long hours, carrying too much weight, um, which I've done many times. But as long as, you know, I have my health, I'll be able to, I'll probably be able to study languages and create these, these new identities for myself for longer. So that was the main, that, that was a, that was just a fantastic, um, point and there's many of those every week there was a new one but that's just one in particular i wanted to share um we also looked at more practical things not only the philosophical you know um under you know, motivations underlying why to learn the language so uh, we looked in great detail about just how many hours it takes and as i said before i already realized oh, if i want to read all of those books that's going to take a long time and if you want to learn lots of languages to the level where you can actually start learning how to read literature in those languages yeah yeah it takes a, it takes many hours and he helped to break this down for us and gave some great practical advice um such as he gave us um a, a program for how how he would start planning to study a new language what materials he would use how he would do it and as i said i can i think here i can share some of that information that people want at the end but that's uh, that's all i want to say on that one for now um so yeah, things were going great last year. Things, sorry, just looking at the messages. Things were going great um, last year. I, I'd gone from struggling at the beginning of the year. I'm going to learn French, and I was struggling. Couldn't I couldn't even do it every day for 15 minutes. To I'm now juggling successfully. I'm juggling three languages, and I'm attending this great books class, and things are going great. But um, I didn't realize at the time, um, I realize it now, but I didn't realize at the time that I needed to step back a little bit, that I was putting myself in, under too much pressure. So what do I mean? Well, I, you know, one of the great things I learned through the course and through the courses, through the classes, through my classmates is you need to start tracking your time and really examining your time. And so I've got uh, 
This is my notebook, my language notebook, where I tick off. You can see all these different... Uh, am I going to go full screen? I don't need to go full screen anyway. I tick off all the different colors, tick off uh, for each language, tick off how many hours I was doing, but I was getting stressed. It's like Because some days I couldn't hit my targets. And I started thinking, oh no, what about... <laughs> How am I going to ever get to the point where I can do this? And it was just beginning really stressful. Um, and obviously that doesn't help. Um, I then, I realize now, again, I um, should have taken the advice of one of my uh, one of my classmates who said uh, he's, all, he, he's also a bibliophile. He loves books. And he said he had recommended I buy all the books I was going to need at the start and then stop because that entire top shelf there is just some of the language books I've bought. I've been buying Azzy meal books for languages I might not even learn, but I be I was became obsessed with hunting on eBay. Now, if any of you have done this or experienced this, this is a form of procrastination, and it's not good. <laughs> um, I I recognise this now. So I have um, the good news is in the past few months I've been recognising these things and stepping back a bit and getting more into this positive rhythm and recognising the perfectionism. This was an important part, but this came from actually joining this other class. So I joined another class. I took on Latin at the beginning. I was encouraged into it by, by a classmate of mine and Latin has taken over my life. Basically, uh, that might sound a bit strange having just said, oh, things are great. I was balancing three languages. Now Latin's taken over that, um, but it has really become the glue, um, not just in the obvious way of, it sounds it's obvious that Latin would help French and Italian, but it's actually helped with Greek. So we've been using anyone who's studied Latin, I'm sure, knows this book, Familia Romana. And this is a natural book that this uses the natural method. So it's a complete story, you know, um, and it just brought together all of the grammar things, all the grammar topics for me that I've struggled with for years because like most native English speakers, I was not taught grammar at school. I've had to teach myself grammar through teaching for foreigners over the years. Um, and this just, it's just been fantastic. I understand Greek better and what it is and how it's constructed from studying Latin and the pace we've been setting and how we've been working. And it's really helped me to understand that perfectionism, going back to this point over here, perfectionism was holding me back. So, um, you know, I wouldn't study every day if things weren't perfectly aligned. <laughs> if things weren't just right, I wouldn't do it. Um, I imagine I'm not the only one here. If you're doing that, you need to stop, right? That's what I've learned from this guided self-study course where, you know, we are doing it with, we are following the professor's instructions, but we're not studying this in class. We are we are being told what to do and going and doing it and then coming together and making sure we're doing it and testing each other and, and improving together. So um, that's really helped me to understand. I wasn't, I was downplaying the amount of review that was needed. I was feeling like every time I do a lesson, these are as email books are divided into lessons. I had to get it right. And that's just not true. You need to do revision. You need to do review again, um, more review than you probably think. Now, again, many of you polyglots and hyper polyglots, you know that. But if you're if you're not at that stage yet, you might not. You might also be in this perfectionism stage. So you need to stop. It will help. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much where I am now. I'm at this point now where I've learned these lessons and I'm very optimistic about what's coming. What's coming for the, the rest of the year and about the, the goals I want to hit. Um, so. At this point, I I feel I, I feel like I um, I should offer some criticisms because uh, well I think the academy is fantastic. I think it would benefit many people, but you know, in the interest of balance, I want to be fair and give some some criticisms or some points. And and I don't mean this from a position of uh, again I'm not trying to be superior here. It's not for casuals, and that's because it's a lot of work. Um, you have to go. I've been going every Saturday. I, I don't have a Saturday social life anymore. My Saturday is Great Books Day. 
you know and that's that's how i live now um there are no short courses there's no it's it's hard for someone to kind of get a taste of what the academy is you have to be very very dedicated to it and very into it and um that's good obviously but i think that might prevent some people from trying it who would get a benefit from it and there are some technological limitations the professor is very very uh into his you know He's not into technological things. We'll put it that way. And that's part of the charm. If you like books and you like writing things by hand, then that won't bother you. But for an online academy, it might prevent it from growing as much as it should in the future. But those are yeah, those are just these are my criticisms that aren't really criticisms. I just thought I should. Uh, I didn't want it to be too much of um, too much on one side. So at this point, ah, there are some questions. I didn't click across to the, I was looking at the chat, not the questions. Um, there's enough time. I'll quickly mention the honorable mentions and then I'll go to some, any questions. So um, dual language books, they're amazing. Um, now maybe most of you know this, maybe you don't, but English, um, English private language schools, they really promote this idea, at least in my experience, I think this is very common around the world, that it's a English only environment. Come to this school learn study in only english and that's how i and many other teachers who were prepared for this were taught we were taught only use english we were taught how to teach only using english and um i'm just not convinced anymore that that's the best method for most i think most people would benefit from especially at lower levels from mixing you know using their native language to learn it more um so these dual language books, I have an example here. You know, this is this is one, this is an Italian one. This is a parallel text. So English one side, Italian the other side. Got that around the wrong way. Um, these are fantastic. The Azimil books are the same. They are the same. So if you if you haven't seen an Azimil book before, you know, here, Greek one side. This is actually Italian, Italian the other side. Um I don't know why that's the standard in English, in the English language teaching kind of world, but I don't think it should be. And if you haven't, uh, you know, these books have really helped me to improve my own, my own Italian reading, for example. Um, this final point here, I haven't really mentioned this anywhere, but I think this is actually probably, this whole talk was more, this presentation was aimed more at people at my level or below who to give them, you know, so you can share my experiences a little bit and hopefully help them a little bit. But this is really at the, well, this also applies to the polyglots and the hyper polyglots. Think about maintenance now. Um, so when I was debating whether to add Latin or Greek and to add more languages, uh, I originally thought maybe I should focus on one. Maybe I should put all my energy into French, for example, and get that level up. And I asked, um, I asked the professor, I asked my classmates, um, what do you recommend? How should I do this? And he told me that this, ultimately it's about balance. You know, at some point in the future, and he's openly said he's made this mistake himself by trying to learn too many languages, that ultimately you will, ha you will have to balance these languages and maintain these languages. Now, if you just want to be at a good speaking level, that's probably not a problem. But if you are, particularly if what I've been talking about today interests you, if you want to be someone who, if you want to have this ability to read at a high level in multiple languages, you need to start thinking about the maintenance now because the real challenge is not learning these languages, but you need to build your life around them. You need to find this, this way to balance maintaining them because otherwise you you will always struggle to read at high level in those languages. Um, I think this is this is something that, um, yeah, for anyone who's getting started or getting, you know, getting into this journey, making lists of all the languages you want to learn, it can be a bit disheartening to think, oh, maybe I, but yeah, you, maybe you won't be able to learn 10 to a very high level, but you can definitely learn less than that. And you just, you just need to be more realistic if this is what you want to do. Um, so yeah, that's everything. I'm quite happy that's come to not too long. So now 
I have uh, time for any questions. And I've seen there are some questions. So fantastic. Let me just read some water. Um, okay, so the first question's here. I don't, I don't know if they're in order or if they're just the ones that have been voted the most. So the first question, how do you do review? What does reviewing look like for you? Um, well, using these, using the methods I'm using, so I'm using, so in French, for example, I am using French Without Toil, the Azimil book. For, for Latin, I'm using the Familia Romana book. So review is quite simply going back over the other chapters and there are cycles to it so i'm at different cycles um you know the earlier chapters in the latin book i don't really need to review i just do the exercises but for the french without toil for example i have different stages it's like i'm going through it in different cycles so i'm still reviewing i finished the book but i've only really just got started um internalizing it and I will eventually add another French book in, but continue to re -go, to re go over the old lessons. And um, more, I realized that I didn't get the, I didn't get the ratio right. I need to do more review. Even now, this is my next challenge really for this year to get more review in. So that's what I mean by that. Um, so Heidi, Heidi Lovejoy has said, when you say you are failing, can you explain in what ways or perhaps what felt like failure to you? um well just going back to, to going back to those years that i said i struggled you know, i struggled um to learn so I, I was living in italy teaching in english i was working a lot that was the first problem so and i just um but it's also an excuse you know i was working a lot in english but i could have studied more i could have done 15 minutes a day there's no excuses for that um i just didn't make it a priority i wasn't disciplined enough and Again, it comes back to that that why. Um, I I've actually lived in the Netherlands too. Like I got my Dutch. I went to a Dutch course um, when I was there. That was my first experience of being being a, a language student, and I had a Dutch language partner. I continued doing that when I left the Netherlands, a uh, language exchange. But um, I just got to the point when I decided I I couldn't manage both, and I don't know why. But you know, I just didn't make it a priority. And all those other languages I mentioned, you know, I just didn't take them seriously enough. Um, you know, I know now that uh, spending hours on Duolingo, Duolingo Spanish, will not teach you Spanish. <laughs> didn't know that at the time, though. I felt like I was doing well. And I bought the books, but I just didn't study them methodically. So that's why I said I was a, uh, that's why I say I failed, because, you know, I just didn't get to a good level and I didn't maintain it um so next question have you ever experienced decision paralysis because of how many great languages there are to learn i find this even more challenging than studying itself um i think this is the the polyglots problem um and i think this comes back to that yes definitely definitely i had a list of languages i wanted to learn and that list was unrealistic i now know you know um I now understand there's a big difference between learning learning a language very close to your native language and learning one very that's not so close and i would say if you're finding it challenging this is me putting on my putting on my teacher hat here if you're finding this challenging that's probably an example of the analysis uh, analysis paralysis the procrastination that i mentioned for me, it became hunting for materials on eBay, but I know I'm not the only one who spends far too much time looking for the ideal resource. So that's why now I have a again, this is not my this is not my 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 wisdom. This is following the, the professor's advice. I only use one material. Now for the, for, for, for Latin, that's this one book. This is the only book I'm using. Um, I will occasionally allow myself to go off and just read other things, just to just just more to give myself a keep myself motivated um, for French. I have other French Azimil books. I'm going to, I have some other books lined up. I will, I will occasionally read the dual language books, but this is the predominant thing. So I would say, you know, 
that maybe you're procrastinating a little bit there um but i do think that's part of it you, you just want to learn all the languages this is uh, this is why we're all here isn't it we are we've been it's like uh we've been caught by this uh, in this trap of of wanting to learn languages because it's a great experience so i hope that's answered that question um what have we got here do you do you find it's better to get to a B level or a C level in the language before continuing to the next one? Um, well, in this question, I can't really comment um, too much. I used to be a Cambridge examiner for for English. Um, so, and I I did the C level, C1 in particular, lots of C1 classes with um, massive groups of teenagers. And um, so I have a lot of experience with the, these level systems um the common european framework of reference but now i don't really place too much emphasis on it i know my ultimate goal is to be able to read in these languages at a high level that's that's my that's my goal so and as i mentioned before how i'm approaching this is i'm trying to find a balance because ultimately i will need ultimately i will need to balance um these languages just as i mentioned before this for me at the moment this is italian French, Latin, and Greek, but I want to add at least German into this in the future, maybe many years. And I would also like the challenge, at least, of trying to learn something even more difficult. So um, I'm finding it's fantastic learning all these languages together. I'm more motivated. I study more, but I also have I have a very long time horizon. You know, I don't expect uh, I'm going to jump into some of the Greek and Latin rooms over this over the course of this weekend but i expect i'll be contributing very little and probably next year the same so i think it really depends on your horizon and and what your ultimate goals are okay so hi oh, we'll, so these questions have all changed because uh, ian your question jumped up it's got more more votes so you've talked about reading at length but what about listening has the academy and the professor's approach changed your perspective on audio do you listen to scorpio uh martianus in latin now um for the time i'm going to have to answer this very because of, because of the time i'll answer that very quickly so if you go and watch the professor's video about how to learn it's actually it's using french as the example how to learn using as email i use his shadowing method that he talks about there so i am using this i'm using audio at the same time as i'm learning so i shadowing very 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 quickly shadowing is you listen to the audio and you listen and speak at the same time and it's great. I haven't got time now because there's one more question, but it has worked for me fantastically well. I'm, I'm, it's, it's like it combines all the skills at the same time. Uh, when I used to teach, I noticed um, teach adults who were not polyglots, but just the average adult English learner, they struggled because they didn't get enough audio repetition listening in. But by using the shadowing methods and just go and watch the professor's video, how to learn a language in 15 minutes a day. If not, um, yeah, it's fantastic method. It works for me. I'm not using Scorpio Martianus's audio for Latin now because the professor recommended not to do it for beginners because of his pronunciation. He uses a kind of reconstructed Latin pronunciation where he cuts off some of the ends of the words. And for us, Starting in the beginning, he stresses we need to really hear the ends of the words. So we actually shadow the audio together in class. And um, so that's why I'm not using it now. I have listened to it. It's fantastic. He has some, some fantastic resources for Latin, which in the future I'm looking forward to getting to. Um, so the final question here, what does a study session look like for you now? So, okay, so again, just go and watch this video. This I pretty much copy this method. This method, I so it's fifteen minutes at a time. Um, for example, I will spend fifteen. I found fifteen minutes to be the sweet spot for me. I will do fifteen minutes of Latin, for example. I will go through a chapter, the latest chapter in the book, and then I'll stop, and then I'll get up and walk around. <laughs> then I'll do fifteen minutes of the next language. Usually, I go. I usually go Latin, French, Italian. Greek, it depends. And I try to do that. I'm doing more Latin at the moment. So Latin, I tend to do more of, but I try to split it up and do have a session like this in the morning and a session like this in the afternoon. It doesn't always work that way. 
but um yeah that's how they that's that's what they look like for me uh, i do also sometimes pick up these dual language books and just enjoy reading them but uh i try to spend more time focused on on this method and um yeah that's that okay i think that's all the questions so that's all the questions um so i think i'm supposed to stop here because i've got to 45 minutes so just to, to finish up um you know, um, I'm, as I said, I'm not affiliated with the academy. I'm just a student. But if any of you want to know more about it and just reach out to me, um, I do have a slide with my contact details on there. I don't know if we can put that back. Um, thank you very much, Sonia, who's hiding in the background backstage. So I'm most active on LinkedIn. I have an Instagram. I have a Facebook, but I don't. I, it's one of those things where this year is going to be the year I post on there more often and make them better. There are some very embarrassing videos of me doing uh, English reels, so don't go don't go look at them. They're from last, they're from a year ago. Um, but the academy website is easy to find if you want more information. As I said, though, um, I am more than happy to tell anyone more about it if they want to know, or again, if you just want to know anything else, know more about anything else I've spoken about, or just just reach out. You know, that's why I've uh, also why I participated in this today, because I wanted to share my experience and to just meet meet other people who are also on this journey together. So thank you very much. And I'll, I'll stop there.